And what I've plotted here is the, the radiation going to space as a function of the thermal frequency. So the room that we're in is full of thermal radiation. We're radiating, you know, the walls are radiating. And if you analyze it, it it's got various frequencies. They look roughly what you're, uh, what you're looking at now. So to the right of that diagram are high thermal radiation frequencies and the left are low. And the smooth blue curve is the famous Planck curve that uh, ushered in quantum mechanics. It's uh, in one of the most famous curves in physics. Uh, and uh, the black curve uh, is the radiation that you would see coming out to space from satellites. And we have lots of measurements of this. I'll show you some in a minute. And you can see that the black curve is well below the blue curve. So the total radiation going to space is the area under the black curve, the jagged black curve, and it, it's substantially less than the, uh, if you had no blue greenhouse gases, which is the blue curve. But the point I want to make is if you double CO2, the difference is you go from the black curve to the red curve, which I can just barely see from here, but it's a very tiny difference. Very few, few people realize that if you double CO2, you will only change the radiation to space by about 1%. In this particular case, we say 1.1%. And this is, there's no dispute about this. IPCC had done this calculation before we did. We said three watts per square, centimeter, square meter. They say 2.8. So they actually, uh, we're actually more uh, pessimistic than they are, but not by very much. So CO2 is not a potent greenhouse gas. It's an impotent greenhouse gas. And uh, let me uh, just, if you say is it, this is somebody's theoretical calculation, let me just show you. If you use these codes to compare what satellites see, here's an example. And on the left are model calculations with the same codes I just showed you. And on the right are satellite observations. There's no adjustment. These are, no, nobody has tried to fit any curves here. And uh, you can see that you can hardly tell the difference. I would really have to point out which is model and which is observation if, you, if I hadn't arranged it in this way. There's a huge amount of interesting physics I won't bore you with. This is at three different latitudes on Earth. One is over the Sahara Desert. One's a little further north of the Mediterranean where it's a little bit cooler. In both of those areas, you see there's a big notch due to uh, the presence of CO2 in the atmosphere. Uh, CO2 both absorbs and emits. And so in the center of the line, you're seeing emission of CO2 up in the stratosphere. And over at the sides, you're seeing uh, the Earth shining all the way through all the greenhouse gases, the atmospheric window. It's quite interesting to look at Antarctica, which satellites do where CO2 reverses its role. So CO2 is an anti-greenhouse gas over Antarctica. Uh, 